glad you could join us today for the 12th episode of Season 2 of The Salem Painter. You know, it's been a while since I've been in the studio, so I'm glad to be back. We usually do two or three of them at a time, and then wait a few weeks, maybe a month, and come back and do two or three more. All right, what I'm doing right now, I'm just putting a thin coat of liquid white, and liquid white is just a really thin white paint, and you use it as a, a base to help your paint move around and blend on the canvas. You know, if, if you don't have access to liquid white, you can actually you can use uh, white paint then with linseed oil and a little paint thinner, and it'll work just as well. It's just more convenient this way. You know, uh, this is actually a, a very easy technique to do. So, you know, if we can take one more step out, might as well do it, right? Make it even easier. All right, now that we got that on, I've got to decide what I'm going to paint today. I didn't really spend a lot of time thinking about what I was going to do, so I, I called my singer in my band and I asked him what I should do today. And he was telling me about this movie that he really likes called Five Centimeters Per Second, and I'd watched it before. And it had very beautiful skies. So we're going to try to make a painting that's it's kind of like some of that. All right, first I'm going to go down to my, my palette here and. I'm, Get a little bit of blue. Just load up the brush. Tap through it. The blue is very strong, so uh, we don't need much of it. And if we don't like the color we have, we can always go back and add more to it. That, that's the great thing about this liquid white. It allows us to blend on the canvas, so we can we can add like if we need it darker, we can add some black or brown. Or, whatever we want. I think today I'd like to blend a little purple, well, a little bit of red, maybe a little bit of uh, a little bit of the lizard and crimson to make a very deep purple color. Get some of that up in the sky. And let's see, we'll start right here, just blending it in. You know, some parts be a little more red, some parts a little more to the blue side. Get a little bit up here. Just, when I get done with this, I want it to just look like there's streaks of color going through the sky. I really love things like this. We're going to come back after we're done putting the color on the canvas. We're just going to kind of kind of blend it in. So you can't tell where one color starts and another begins. It's already starting to blend in for us. I really love this liquid white because it just lets you do some things that almost look like magic on the canvas. Got that. You know, earlier I was saying if you wanted it to be a little darker in some places, you can get some other colors. So maybe I'm going to go down and get a little bit of brown, a little bit of phthalo green loaded up on the brush, or the brown and the green. I'm just going to start up in the corner and just put in some of that dark color. To the canvas here. Doesn't do any good to sit there looking at the paint. <laughs> All right, there we go. Brown the green, making this look a lot darker. And maybe a little bit more down here. And 
if you have any places where you feel like the color sticks out too much, just keep blending over them. Very easy to correct mistakes. Just blend it out. In fact, there are no mistakes. Every, every bit of color we add to this canvas it adds to our finished product. Looks pretty good to me already. All right, real quick, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna clean my brush. Let's see. Just, I have a coffee can here with paint thinner in it, and. Um, I just kind of rub the brush across the paint thinner. I mean, across the screen and the paint thinner. And that takes most of the paint off the brush. And then, uh, let's see, I don't think I have it in the shot today, but I have a little trash can here beside me. I'll actually pick this up and show it to you. And it's got, it's got a broom handle going through it, so I can just beat the brush on the, the broom handle in the trash can. And after I've cleaned it off with the paint thinner, the paint just flies right off. Go down and get a little bit of, a bit of yellow, a little bit of cat yellow. Just load up the brush. I'm gonna go back up to my canvas here. I'm just gonna start putting some yellow down, like maybe there's a sunset. This looks very bright right now, but I'll end up blending in with the other colors, and there won't be that much yellow. And I'm just gonna start at the bottom here where the lightest colors are. And just kinda start blending up. We don't wanna go into our blue and go way down into our yellow because we'll turn it all green. And that's that won't that won't make us happy. We don't want that. Alright, just blending some. There, a little bit brighter. All right, and already we've got a nice looking sky here. And you can come along the bottom, and after you're done blending in your sky, you can just kind of Clean your brush off down here. All, all this is going to be covered up, but this is a great way to remove the excess color. Who knows, we might even have some water in here. I haven't decided yet. And if we do, well, this is a good way to put it in. Alright, and now we're going to go back down to the canvas and maybe we'll get a little bit of the brown a little bit of the maybe green blue just a really maybe even more of the brown really dark color and we're going to come back up to the canvas and just kind of start putting in some little grassy shapes gonna have a little hill that comes up through here keep loading it up and we, we want to keep it very dark normally things that are further off in the distance will be lighter but when you've got the Sun setting back behind it you, you want to get a little bit of that color standing out you know when you, you look at a tree or grass or something a hill in the Sun it really contrasts with the color behind it and it appears darker so when you're painting like this you want to you want to think about how you see things and paint them like you see them. You know, if you paint things like you see them, you don't have to worry about about techniques or how other people say things should look. You just paint it how you want it. And I'm putting this in with little dashes like this. You could even 
paint darker color in just straight across and smear it but I want this to look kind of textured I'm just going back into that same color You know, I think I will make a leg down at the bottom of this. It'll look very good. But before we go on, I think I'm going to add some clouds into here. So what I'm going to do is go down and get a little bit of the titanium white and just load a fan brush up with it. Just load it up, wiggle it back and forth. We're going to go back to the canvas and. I'm just going to decide where I think a cloud would be. I'm just going to make little white circles and just scrub them into the canvas really hard. You know, if it starts getting too light, just uh, pick up some more color. Just scrub it in there. Corner of the brush, scrubbing some in. And maybe, maybe in my world, there's a, another cloud right here. These can just go wherever you want them. All right. And big cloud right here in the front you want to load up your brush quite often because that color underneath is going to blend with this you want to keep it basically white you can even wipe it off on a paper towel between so you don't get your white paint all messed up all these other colors blending in with it Cloud coming right up through here, right near the horizon. All right. Now I'm gonna go back here and uh, clean my brush again. I've got my uh, two-inch brush that I'm gonna use next and blend out these clouds. I have another brush over here that's a two-inch, but I like to use this nylon brush because. It's really good for blending things. I'm just gonna dry it off, make sure I got all the color out. Wipe it off with a paper towel. Okay, now I'm gonna go back up to these clouds and just start blending out the bottoms of them. We wanna leave the tops alone, just leave them basically untouched. We're just using the corner of the brush and blending the clouds out. Do the same thing for the other ones. All the way across. And the reason I, I scrubbed really hard on these was to, to set the paint down into the canvas. Because then it's not going to move around. Because you'll want that for the next step. Let's see, I think that one's a little bit too round. Blend it out some more. All right. And you know, you could blend these clouds as, as much or as little as you want, but you gotta be careful not to overdo it because if you do, these clouds will just disappear. You don't have any clouds. All right. Blend it out a little bit more. There. And you want some of them to be brighter than others. And maybe, let's see here. That needs to be blended out some more. All right, now I'm going to just beat the paint off the bristles of the brush, get it clean again. You don't necessarily have to go back through the whole washing process. Sometimes you can just kind of slap the paint off, and, and that'll work just fine. 
And now we're going to come back and just uh, along the top, we're just going to fluff these clouds up, just lift them. You know, you get little stringy things hanging off of them at the top, so that's okay. So we're going to come across and just blend these in too. And just lightly come across. Very lightly. If you go too hard, you'll just blend these back into the canvas. Which is fine if that's what you want to do with them. But we we worked hard making those. We don't want to do that to them. Alright. Now I'm going to go back into that brown color. The brown and green mixed together. I'm just going to come back over some of this that we just made. more. We want to be sure we cover up all this yellow that we got here because you don't really want your, your sky showing through the hill here. You know, in a few days here, I'm actually going on a trip to Japan, and I'm really looking forward to that. It's going to be a lot of fun. I think that, uh, you know, we went last year, and I think that this time it's going to be even more fun because we have a lot of friends there now. It'll be nice to see everyone again. As I mentioned before, I'm in a a band and we're actually going touring there and so I think that'll be definitely a lot of fun all right now I'm just gonna I'm taking this color I've got here and just taking some of it that's already there I'm pulling it down to make an indication of reflections in the water just pulling straight down if you do this at an angle it's gonna kind of look strange straight down with it and blend across. And let's see, I think on this side maybe it needs to be blended a little bit more. That it needs to come down a little further. Yeah, I kind of like this brown color. It reminds me of the lakes back home where I'm from. I'm from Georgia, and all the lakes kind of look like this. They're not dirty, it's just the, the dirt underneath makes them look that way. See, I'm just blending that color in using the liquid white. And when, when you're blending your water, you always want to go side to side. Because if you do this at an angle, it's just going to look like it's running out of your painting. I want that for sure. All right. Now I'm going to go down to my, my palette again. I, I think I want to make some little trees coming out of the, up on top of the hills. So really far away. Right now I'm cleaning my brush. Let me see that. Don't have a good way to give you a view of that. So we'll just uh, 
keep the camera there for now. Watch me talking. All right, now I'm gonna go back down to the palette and get some some blue, phthalo green, some brown, sap green. Just make a very dark color. I'm gonna load up the fan brush with it, and now I'm gonna go back up and. Maybe make some trees. I think I'll have one right here. I'll just use the corner of the brush to make these things. All right, and maybe load up some of that same color. Make another one right beside it. that tree just standing out there all by himself do we and maybe another one back a little bit further and we're just using the corner of the fan brush to make these let's see maybe maybe there's one here it's a little bit further up And you can just make these however you want. And I think I'm gonna see get a little bit of the, the brown. Load it up in a brush. And I will, I'm using a one inch brush here. So that can uh we can just kinda load it up so it's rounded on one end, just load the paint all in one direction and then we can just use that to to make a tree shape out here and right now I'm just kinda doing a dark back I'm gonna put some some highlight on this tree in a second so I'm just putting in a little bit of dark color And get some of that green, maybe a little bit of yellow mixed with it, and come back in and just kind of put some leaves on our tree. You still want to be be able to see some of the clouds in the background back there, though. So, so don't color up all, cover up all that dark color or the, the space you left in it. Just leave some of it. If your color's not dark enough, maybe mix in some blue or something like that with it. down here the same color I'm coming in and going back over this dark color that I put in I think I'll use a two-inch brush and just filling it in with like little grassy things You know, if you tap this a lot, it's going to make it look very soft, more like grass. And the closer you get in the painting to you, the darker you want things to be, usually. 
depending on where the source of your light is. For us, the light's coming from back here where the sun's setting. So I definitely do want it darker. And maybe, maybe we'll want to get some, some yellow, yellow ochre. Into my palette, and just kind of mix them together on the brush, and I'm gonna go back up to the canvas and maybe just put put some little brighter things wherever you think the sun would hit. You know, a lot of this is really far back in the shadows, but I'm just gonna put a little highlight on it. Brighten that up. And the little spaces between the trees put a little bit too. Alright. Now here would be a good time to maybe pull some of this color down. Not a lot. Cross, just like we did before. And we're just lightly coming across using a couple of hairs of the brush. Not too much. We don't, we don't want to destroy that color. We just want to give the indication of a reflection. Oh, I've got a kind of a strange glare on here, so we're going to see if we can. There we go. Change camera angles, let you see it a little bit better. If you see me looking off over this way, it's because I've got a monitor that that shows me what you see. And behind me, right here, I've got a, a switchboard that lets me switch the camera angle. So if, uh, if I ever mess up on it, and I leave you looking at the, the palette for two or three minutes, well, you'll know who did it. It was me. All right, now we're gonna go back and just lay on some land here next to the bank. We're just gonna do that by going down to our palette and spreading out some brown to a really thin layer and just getting some of it on the palette knife. And I'm gonna just go back across. And I'm actually, I'm actually doing this pretty hard because my brown paint is quite thick. We're gonna come back over it with a highlight color in a minute, but but this we really want to get on there. Just cover up all these spaces. It'll look pretty good when we get the highlight on it. Every time I, I do this, I feel like like I probably made a terrible mistake, and it's going to be terrible and awful forever. But it usually turns out okay. Alright, now I'm going to go back down to the palette and for the highlight color and take some of that brown and just mix it with some white. And 
Oh, you can't really see that, so I'll just pick up that color and move it over here. There we go. And I'm just leaving the paint kind of marbled. I'm gonna come back up and just get some of that and put a little highlight here. I'm gonna just just let it take what it wants off the palette knife. We're gonna drag it across, kind of like kind of like when we're putting snow on the mountains. You've seen us do a lot of mountains over the episodes. Unless this is your first time watching, and then you haven't. And I want to thank you for, for watching. I hope you enjoy it. And we'll come back and join us again sometime. You know, lately I've been thinking about maybe doing some animation. I've been working with animation software. And I thought it might be interesting to animate myself. Do a little... Uh, tutorial class using cartoons. I already have a great version of myself that a buddy of mine made. So I don't even have to come up with a character, I just have to animate him. And you always want to go at an angle. If you, if you don't go at an angle it's going to look like have a little cliff going on there, which might be interesting. So that's up to you, whatever you want to do. All right, I'm going to get a little bit, little bit of the liquid white. I'm going to put some on the palette and just spread it out thin. And I'm just going to cut across it, get a little thin layer of it on the knife. As you can see there, on the th there's a roll on the tip. Ignore the rest of that because it's not going to do anything. All right. And we're going to go back up here and just kind of cut straight across where we just put in our bank a bit more. Straight across. Straight again. Just straight lines. And one right here. And that's just going to Give the indication of water coming across here. All right. Well, we got this part of the painting done, and uh, you know, this is where it gets hard. Where you you decide what you want to do next, and you know what you decide could either make the painting great or destroy it. So, you come back down. Bold move here. Lots of colors darker than they were before because they're closer and I'm just gonna start right here and just just destroy this and more of the same colors maybe this is like a River bank. I don't know. We'll decide in a minute. Uh, yeah, lots of dark color in here. Dark blue, green, brown. Just whatever you want to mix together. If I had some black out here, I might put some of that in there too. I like to change up the colors sometimes, so so all the paintings don't look the same. And as you can see, getting darker as I come back. Makes it look like another layer in here. I'm just dabbing in paint. You can almost do it with a paint roller if you want it.
little bit more. We're almost done. Just want to fill in all the white area down at the bottom of the canvas here. Let's see, maybe. I think maybe right coming down through here where I'm I'm brushing along there. I'm gonna, gonna make a little trail that goes through there. bush color in here all right and next I think I want a big tree so I'm gonna go down get some more of the brown the green blue all mixed together and go back up to the canvas and that's way too much paint. Gotta get some of that off. <laughs> okay, come back up to the canvas and just decide where we want our big tree to live. We're gonna do another one right here. Big, big dark evergreen tree here. And just keep your brush loaded up with color. If you, if you start to run out, you can always come back and get more because you don't want to be able to see through your tree. Yeah. Paint finally fell off the brush. Come clean that back up. All right. a lot of paint making this tree. That's okay. I don't want to buy more paint. All right. Now that we're done with that, I'm going to clean off my brush. A lot of brush cleaning up. I feel like I spend more time cleaning brushes than I do painting. All right, let's see. Do I have the brush cleaned? Yeah, for the most part, not really. Fan brushes are the hardest one to clean because I can't just beat them on the little broomstick I got in here. It doesn't, it doesn't work very well. All right, well, I'm going to go back down to my palette and just get some, some yellow colors mixed all together and make some highlights on this tree. I mean, the sun's behind it, but you're still going to have the colors coming from one side to the other, so I'm just kind of put a little bit more color on the right side. Your color is going to mix in with that green, but but that's actually going to look pretty good because you want the, the tree to kind of look darker as you come down. It's going to be in the shadows more. Just a little highlight. All right. Yeah, that one's looking pretty good. And you know, normally, I would finish up the things in the foreground before I go back to the back and do anything, but I decided that I'm going to go back and make some changes. So I'm going to get some of that liquid white I had and mix it with a little bit of brown, green, and just roll my script liner brush in it. I'm going to come back up to the canvas and maybe make some little branches in this tree. And that tree just looked kind of boring to me there in the background, so. We're gonna make it not so boring. And you know you can you can make 
this tree as big or as small as you want. Make the branches hang however you want. Maybe we got one that kind of flops over this way. Let's put it in there. And you won't necessarily see all the branches. They might be covered. So we're going to come back and put some more leaves on it here in a second. After we put some highlights on it. some of that same leaf color I used earlier. Go back over some of these. Cover up some of the bottom of it. Maybe it's a little darker on this side. Sun sun shining on it. Look, by the time I came back and put in leaves, I didn't really have many of those branches left. That's all right. Now we're gonna get a little brown and white, and I'm just gonna make a little tree trunk in this tree here. Again, just like I did with the other tree, I come back and cover some of that up, put it into the tree. We don't want the trunks just floating out on top of it. And I'm gonna come back down to the palette, start in again with some of these yellow colors, and I'm gonna go back up and start highlighting some of these bushes that we have in here along the tree. Just do one bush at a time. And leave a little bit of the dark areas. You want some of those. That'll look good. And just uh, think about where the light would hit on these leaves of the bushes. And leave some of that dark space there. That's what's going to make these look like individual bushes and not just like you came and slammed your brush into it. Okay, another one right here. Switch up the colors often. Maybe even maybe even add a little red in there. A little crimson. There we go. And when you're ready to put in another row of bushes, just come on down with it. Leave some of that dark space. Don't forget that. Actually, maybe I want a bright one right here. Step back for a second. Look at what I got. All right. row of them right there maybe it's not really big bushes just little clumps of uh, grassy kind of things right there in that area all right now I'm gonna get some white you can watch me do this this mix a little green I'm not too concerned about the color I just wanna want something a little bit lighter and I'm gonna come back up to the canvas and I'm gonna start putting a trail that goes back here just do that by waving the brush back and forth. Maybe I'll uh, do some blue in it too. Make it really dark. 
compared to everything else. And I'll leave some of these little places coming out. So maybe looks like it's blending into the trail. And now I'm going to come back again with my white. A little bit lighter color. And kind of do some highlights to this. I'm gonna go back down to my palette, get a little bit of brown. Maybe I'll make some little rocks and things going through here. to cut out a little bit there where I left the camera pointed at the palette too long. And I'm just uh, putting in some little rocks along here. It's in the trail. And I'll come back and get a little bit of the white or blue and just put some highlights on them. I think light would hit. You know, I actually don't like those rocks. So you know what we can do? We can just scrape them off the canvas. Come back in and just do our blending again. Just like I was talking about earlier. If you don't like something, you can always get rid of it. Just blend it out. But I do feel like we need something in there on the side of the trail. I don't know what yet. Maybe, maybe another bush. A little row of bushes here. And kind of highlight that with a little, a little ochre. We have lots of dark areas. As things get closer to you, they generally get a lot darker, have deeper shadows. All right. Well, I think we're going to call that a finished painting. That's about all the time we have for today. But I'm I'm glad that you joined us and watched, and I hope that you learned from this. I learned a little bit, and if you've watched the show before, you know this one's a little bit different than the ones that I've been doing, so uh, hopefully next time I'll try one like this, it'll be a little bit better than this one is. Well, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.